Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three of this news bulletin for today, September 12, 2012. The links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so go check them out. We left off with this article right here, talking about kind of geopolitics. Pakistan and China pledged to stand united on Tuesday, they said this. Completely supported Pakistan on all regional and international issues, which is a big idea, a big deal. We're just talking about how the next president of Pakistan was actually the founder of the Pakistani nuclear program. So, I mentioned that before about uh, nuclear uh, Pakistan. China multiplies its war toys and India plays catch up. In 2009, the Indian army carried out top secret war games. And it goes on, it says aimed at analyzing China's threat to the country. The conclusion, China could attack India by 2017, and there was a possibility of Pakistan stirring the pot by trying to trouble India at the same time. And just keep moving here, North Korea to reduce China reliance. China and North Korea said their relationship is as close as lips and teeth. The analogy is this uh, comforting, I guess, and so given the current trends in bilateral trade, with some concern that Beijing will simply swallow up its neighbor. North Korean analysts predict that the situation will push the North to engage the next South Korean administration and other regional players. And remember what I was uh, talking about before in that video, where I mentioned it, uh, about how his father was advising him to uh, open up to Russia and China as far as economic relations. It wants to have serious economic relationship with at least South Korea, Russia, and China. And that's why I made the quote uh, that North Koreans will no longer have to tighten their belts. South Korea, U.S. practice occupying North Korea. South Korean troops practice a war scenario involving the occupation and stabilization of North Korea during a joint military drill with the United States last, last month. And it sucks that they have to do that. You know, it's too bad the Koreas couldn't unite and tell both China and the United States to go fuck themselves, right? It starts first Asian bank malls British exit from the EU. This is from actually August 9th. But Japan's biggest bank, Nomura, has issued a 11-page study evaluating the likelihood that the UK will leave the European Union entirely or partly. And same with the economy here, China and Russia are uh, cutting the legs out of the petrodollar. The mainstream media in the United States is almost totally ignoring one of the most important trends in global economics. The trend is going to cause the value of the petrodollar to fall dramatically, and it's going to cause the cause of, uh, cost of living in the United States to go way up. So right now, the U.S. dollar is primarily reserve currency of the world, backed up by oil, of course, making up more than 60% of all foreign currency reserves in the world. And I just thought about it, too. That's why you always hear um, uh, uh, InfoWars and that. I know they have good information and stuff like that, but it's just looking back at uh, what, what they're doing now, uh, you know, not mentioning uh, that the whole thing that's going on in the Mideast as far as that film being released and what's it doing is coming from a, a, a straight from Zionists is what is uh, this uh, petrodollar is if it's a great thing it's backed by uh, you know oil that's uh, you know I don't have to go through the whole thing of how they got the petrodollar but it, it was a result of uh, you know, the oil embargo and Arab nations and Muslim countries actually uniting and then when they did that they got threatened by that and then they created their little uh, oil cartel and stuff like that and you know that dollar's going to be the backup and you got to trade in dollars so it's, it was a big scam to begin with so you always hear those uh those other types of uh alternative news saying oh, oh we're a new reserve currency you know gotta buy gold gotta do this and stuff like that um Alibaba Group expects sales this year to top those of Amazon and eBay combined. The largest e-commerce e firm, Alibaba Group, expects to sell merchandise this year worth of more than uh, that is sold by Amazon Incorporated and eBay combined. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm sick to my stomach. Anger grows in Illinois. Bain's latest outsourcing plan, so it doesn't really matter about that. This stuff's already going on because people have already commented in the comment board about how they've had to do this or known somebody that's had to train some Chinese worker to replace them. So it says here, uh, this plant in Freeport is profitable and competitive, but its majority owner, Bain Capital, has decided to ship jobs to China and force workers to train their overseas replacements. It's kind of ironic, too, you know, because uh, right around the same time, uh, you're talking about uh, China, China's uh, uh, economic or economy being built up propped up by the West, uh, really by these um, by these globalists like Kissinger and them. Uh, that's what they were doing. And Nixon, you know, oh, 
it was all about uh, praises opening the door to China and stuff like that, right? Well, it's kind of ironic because what, right? What happened around 71 and that in 72? Well, they took the dollar off the gold standard. So <laughs> this is, the economy is being systematically killed here. And it's not by any form of global competition, opening of markets. It's completely rigged. And the United States is looking to, uh, uh, to this as well. Uh, talking about labor camps, forced slave labor camps, working off debt, or if you're in prison, right? You're a dissident. Oh, you can go work for these big corporations. Uh, Chinese cities testing labor camp reform. It's a penal system that requires no courts. Instead, China's police can send someone to a labor camp for up to four years with no judicial process. There, individuals usually end up as slave labor, making dirt cheap goods for China's export economy followed by students forced to work in iPhone uh, factory returning to school. Chinese media says students from the eastern Chinese, uh, Chinese city uh, that have been forced recently to work at a factory that makes iPhones have started to return to school, the government published Shanghai Daily reported. Uh, a main Apple supplier, Foxconn Technology, hired students to work in a factory as, quote, interns to meet a shortage of workers, a newspaper said. And there's, uh, I've, I think I've covered this before, about how students were kind of roped into these, uh, these kind of almost like forced labor, where they start threatening them about their college and they can get cut or their tuition get cut. Again, with Apple, Apple Corporation allows forced one-child pregnancy screening of its employees in China. So this is not just a communist China policy. It was imported into the country and is being funded by your tax dollars. A policy of birth control by coerced abortions to reduce the birth rate of the couples to one child is very rare, very real, sorry, and a grim fact. So a dissident who escaped from China uh, is shining a spotlight on the Apple Corporation whose employees at factories in China are compelled to undergo a monthly pregnancy tests. China buys Australia's largest cotton producer. Investment in Australia almost doubled last year as the world's second largest economy flexed its economic muscles abroad. And you have Australian billionaire Gina Reinhart tells country's poor citizens to stop whining, drinking, and smoking. The billionaire, uh, the world's richest women, or woman, has told Australia's envious of rich people that they should stop complaining and work harder. And then again with the uh, same woman, uh, world's richest woman's new idea, wages of $2 a day. That charming Australian billionaire said that the world's jealous poor to stop whining and drinking so much is back with more. She goes on and uh, basically this is the woman who amassed her family fortune via iron ore mining. Thinks Australia's struggling mining industry should look to Africa for inspirations. Yeah, <laughs> where they're actually getting mowed down by guns when they try to uh, assert their rights or their, their labor unions. Step right up and take a ride on Thomas Friedman's hamster wheel to the good life. The truth is, if you want a decent life, make sure you're engaged in lifelong learning about how to avoid the hellish circle jerk described in this New York Times piece. This is the editor, of course, of Crypticon. Check out the comments at the link if you need some comedy gold. Most people are telling Friedman where to insert it. So you go on to it and says, The truth is, if you want a decent job that will lead you to a decent life today, you have to work harder. Regularly reinvent yourself obtain at least some form of post-secondary education, make sure that you're engaged in lifelong learning and play by the rules. That's not a bumper sticker, but we terribly mislead people by saying otherwise. And on with the rich, impunity for the rich and famous leaves ties outrage. A dented silver Ferrari, a dead Thai policeman whose body was dragged for 200 meters under its wheel, a family driver ready to take the fall for the wealthy 27-year-old heir to the world-famous Red Bull energy drink empire. So it's an assumption that the culture of impunity for wealthy businesses and political elite would once again prevail. So moving on here, wealthy socialite, top Democratic, Democratic donor Denise Rich renounces her U.S. citizenship. So July 2012 comes as the latest wealthy Americans to denounce their citizenship. Why? Uh, basically what? Uh, to get rid of her U.S. tax bill. France's wealthiest man reportedly seeks Belgian passport September 8th. The richest man in France and the world's fourth wealthiest is seeking Belgian nationality as Paris moves to impose a 75% wealth tax. So... Um, then we have this, Russian elite may be forced to say goodbye to foreign properties, uh, talking about compulsory nationalization, a ban on having properties and bank accounts abroad. Many top civil servants will just step down to opt out for a mansion abroad. Now, I've heard um, 
another commentator in that uh, mentioned how these elites, this new system will be of one of nomads, these technocrats that will basically not really have any nationality. They'll just go from place to place. And this seems exactly what we're talking about. Uh, I've mentioned before, these crackdowns in Switzerland and safe havens for tax evaders, they're, 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 they're for the, for, they were set up for those guys. And now that they're done with it, uh, they're going after the you know the millionaire or something like that. They was just trying to basically expand their million-dollar business or something like that. They're not billionaires. They're not running the show. Uh, they were just successful at uh, starting a business from the ground up. They're going after those guys. And the IRS is actually paying people to go after uh, those people to shore up for the loss of tax revenue for all these elites and technocrats that are leaving. Billionaire Larry Ellison buys a Hawaiian island. So this is the thing. They want to buy their own islands as well. It doesn't really matter whether he's selling it. The fact is, is he has his own island. Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen selling his private island for $13 million. Then we have billionaire Bill Koch. Remember this, builds private old West Town in Colorado. And they want you to move in the cities and these little uh, smart city apartments and stuff like that. Uh, and no cars and stuff like that. A public transportation. Uh, 20,000 want to become citizens of Nowhere Island. And, and it sounds nice, right? Life on a new nation state. But I have a feeling that this is going to be for the elites themselves. But they say the aim is to encourage people to think about what it would be like to start up a completely new nation. Well, you go ahead and try to do that in this modern civilization, as they call it. And you will get drone bombed. You will get uh, all of your people uh, killed. Women and children, you will be starved if you try to do that. So you could, this is completely manufactured, just like the economy. Smart city initiatives to boost economy coming out of China. Smart city initiatives in China are expected to attract huge money and create jobs, thus contributing to the country's economic growth. The smart cities are really dumb cities. They're easily uh, to, manage, uh, to manage slaves more easily. And, of course, you got smart islands, right? Smart islands. But after these huge corporations and these uh, empires and stuff like that, have basically raped and pillaged all of these small little islands where these where they uh, annihilated and genocide uh, most of these local indigenous people for their sugar or whatever it was, uh, bananas. Now they want to go in there and, and after chopping down all their trees and say, well, now you got to be more sustainable, right? UK banks could be shut down or forced into bailouts by Brussels. This is under the controversial banking union proposals from Brussels. Question is why wages aren't rising in the United States. Persistent unemployment is keeping workers from getting salary increases. If your employer knows that you have you don't have a lot of options, there's no incentive to give you a raise. America's underwater as debt equals 103% of the GDP. Do you have any say over that? No. US debt now $136,000 per household, so you better uh, you better start working that off. Wealth gap in the United States more than doubles between the richest Americans and a typical family more than doubled. Of those, more than 50 million Americans are short of food, mostly the poor. Half of Americans will die with almost no money. Talking about retirees. June food stamp recipients hit an all-time high as three times uh, as many Americans enter poverty. And stick with me, speculating banks profit as world's poorest go hungry. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley among those accused of reaping financial harvests from growing food crisis. Not much of a surprise, but Goldman Sachs bribed the Senate to pass the bailout bill. Followed by too big to jail, Wall Street executives unlikely to face criminal charges, sources say. So double standards here. While Iran sentenced four bankers to hang for a $2.6 billion fraud. You have Greek unemployment surging to almost 25%. And look at this, the Troika requires six-day working week in Greece. It was All of this is leading to what? Greek neo-Nazi party surges to third in the polls. And if you are one of those lucky ones that can find a job, 58% of the jobs being created are low-paying. You have Spaniards pulling out their cash and getting out of Spain. They're also doing what? They're bartering. And they're breaking into stores. Three tons of food looted from grocery stores in Spain as millions struggle. Depression and suicides are on the rise as Euro debt crisis intensifies. And it's not about the money. The new uh, way to measure quality of life is about feeling good. And then we have what? A joy of death festival. That's right. The funeral industry will be gathering to celebrate how they nickel and dime and take advantage and exploit people while they just want to put their dead ones in the ground. Is this what the state wants? British people committing suicide to escape poverty? Well, Britain is in the grips of an economic and social crisis. Speaking of exploiting, U.S. debt collectors are now cashing in on $1 trillion in student loans. Remember, delinquent student debt now reaching record levels as defaults spike. 
And what do they do? Feds will cut Social Security to retirees who owe student debt, which is why Social Security is buying hollow point bullets and holding drills at the administration office. Or maybe you can go and be a stripper to pay off your college tuition. Thank you.